Hi, my name is Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. You know, we started a show about two weeks ago where we're going to introduce you to as many veterans who live in Queen Anne's County as time allows. In the last census, they estimated there was 3,353 veterans, so there are a lot of stories to be told. Now, this week I have one of my favorite people. If you've ever been to Centerville and you go on a regular basis, you see this good-looking man riding a bike around. If you know anything about the Board of Ed, if you know anything about chess, you know my man right here. Bicycle rider, chess player, all around good guy, and a singer, I might add, James, right? I'd like to introduce <laughs> you to James Watson. James, thank you for being here today. Thanks for I having really me. I really appreciate it. Now, James, everyone knows you, because if you've been in town, we've seen you riding bikes. Right. If you work for the Board of Ed, you were one of the most pleasant people there. Right. And George Ick has told me, you were the Bobby Fisher of Queen Anne's <laughs> County. But I bet people didn't know, James, you're a military veteran. I certainly am, yes. I was in the uh, 101st Airborne, Screaming so, Eagles. So you were in the Army? Yes. What year is James? 1958. 1958 to? 1961. Now, did you join or were you a draftee? I uh, enlisted. Oh, you enlisted, okay. I enlisted. So you were an RA? I was an RA. Regular yeah. Army is what that right. means. Okay. Right. So I had no complaints. Okay, so you, you something because you look forward I, I to. I volunteered for that. Okay, now before we get to you jumping out of good planes, <laughs> where did you have basic training? Well, I had basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Okay, now how was that experience? Uh, that experience was pretty harsh for me because... Uh, I was a small town boy. Well, you were born and raised in Centerville, right? Uh, well, I was born in Baltimore. Okay, actually. Baltimore. All right. I was raised in Centerville, graduated from Kennard High School in 1957. And then I joined the military. Oh, right out of high I school. I wanted to get out of uh, Centerville, okay. so to speak. Had not, wasn't doing anything else. I wasn't going to college or nothing like that, which I should have done, but I didn't. So I joined the military, okay. and they, my first assignment was in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And basic training? Basic training. I had uh, first eight weeks in South Carolina, and then I did another eight weeks in South Carolina again for advanced basic. Okay. What was your MOS, military occupation specialty? Well, I don't really... Probably an 11 Bravo. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, so just, just, just a plain infantryman. Okay, so you were an 11 Bravo. Okay, yeah, okay which yeah, is really plain good. infantry. So after uh, Jackson, where'd you go after that? Well, after Jackson, <clears throat> then I uh, they had some recruiters to come to uh, Fort, Camp, Fort Jackson, and they were taking volunteers to uh, be uh, paratroopers. Now, th this I, I did not go to jump school. I, yeah. Tell me about that experience. Well, I had two options. One was to go to Fort Bragg in North Carolina right. with the 82nd. Okay. And the other one was to go to Fort Campbell with the 101st. And I was with the group that went with the uh, 101st in Fort, uh, Fort Campbell in uh, Kentucky. Okay. But it was kind of difficult because uh, it was even more difficult than actually in basic training because in, the paratroopers were very, very strict, very harsh. No and fooling around because we're talking about life and death here, they right? They didn't take prisoners, okay. <laughs> and, so to speak. And uh, basic training was... Uh, Three weeks, uh, of course, and then... This is basic jump school. Yeah. Basic jump school that taught you how to uh, land, how to jump out of the plane, how to land, so forth and so on, and all the commands that you were given the plane, and uh, the commands, what you would do as balls of the feet, when you would land, balls of the feet, calf of the legs, thigh, so butter, they taught you actually push up, how to land. So then you had to practice that. And then they would take you for uh, three qualifying jumps. Now, this is actually in the plane that's jumping. When you were actually in the plane, and that's when you were, they would stand you in the door, have an instructor right there, and one at a time, they would tell you when to jump. Now, tell me about, that the movies it. always see them hooking up in a green light. I mean, is that reality? or That is reality. Oh, that's reality, okay. Yes, you have to hook up inside the plane, because there are two lines run from one from the beginning of the plane to the end of the, from the front of the plane to the back of the plane. Now, well, explain to me, what, yeah, why did they well, hook up? Well, you had to hook up because... <clears throat> The parachute itself was inside of a case. Okay. And when you hooked the line inside the plane on one of the lines, and when you jumped out, 
that line would stay in the plane and it would pull the parachute out of the backpack. So it, autom it would oh, get And then the parachute out. would pop out. Okay. And uh, when you, you would count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, when you got to 4,000, you should feel a jerk on your body. Now, it, a real now, heavy jerk? Or? Yes, well, it would pull you up because... Oh, it, you feel it. Because the, the parachute would disconnect from the rest, from the line that was in the plane. Right, right. Now, when you didn't feel a jerk. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. Things were pretty sticky. Okay. Because uh, after you get to four thousand and you felt the jerk, you would look up to make sure that your parachute was deployed. Okay, and you'd actually see the chute you above you. You could see it. How it was. Now there were two different ways where a parachute would deploy. First would be the regular way, which was the good way, for it before. The next way they call it had a thing they call a streamer. streamer. Your parachute would wrap right around itself, and it would look like a big cigar. Okay. That's meant. It's that like meant, a cylinder in the. Yeah. That's how it would look. When you had that, you were in trouble. <laughs> and then they had another thing, which uh, I guess, excuse my language, you would call it a May West. Okay. It would look like a brazier. Okay. It would be tucked in the in the middle, and you have two books, big loops on each side. All right. That's when you was in trouble also. Because James, that's two out of three you're that's in trouble. Two. I'm not jumping. <laughs> and uh, I thank God that I never had to go through never that. Never had it. But uh, I knew some guys who did. And I knew some guys who didn't make it from that because the chute didn't open. Of course, you had a reserve chute, which we didn't like to use because a lot of times when you pull the reserve chute, it was on your stomach, and you would pull the pin and so forth because you would go back into your tuck, pull the pin, and a lot of time that chute would just fall down by your feet. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't deploy. And, and you try to have to... Feed it up. Beat it and up. In the meantime, you're falling to the ground. And in the meantime, you're falling. Did you ever have to do you that? You were falling maybe about 11, 10, 11, second, 11 feet a second. Mm. Because we were jumping by about 1,300 feet. Now, how about the... I mean, what? Can you recall the feelings? I mean, did the, the sergeant have to push you out? Or did you? Well, no. No, okay. Because you, it was exciting for those first three jumps. Oh, okay. Because... <clears throat> You were in basic in training then, but once you got to a regular outfit, you didn't have that one-on-one -on -one contact. Oh, okay. Because you were mass jumping. Everybody's one go everybody, go go. When the green light popped on, everybody would, would go go go. And plus, you had a uh, you had a uh, like a drop zone, Spa which was clear. Where they out. wanted you to land, right? And your plane would maybe about you had a. 10 second drop zone, 15 second drop zone. That means when the plane got to the, begin, the beginning of the drop zone, you had 10 seconds before it got to the end of the drop zone. So get out of the plane. Once the you got to the end of that drop zone, you were in the trees. Okay, <laughs> which so is one, not good. One, that was not good. Break legs and get so killed. So if you had 15 guys on, on what well, you would call it a stick, 15 guys on each side of the plane, one side going out one side of the door, one side going out the other side of the door. Let me, yeah, James, you, how yeah. do you decide, do you go immediately when the guy in front of you, I mean, do you count one, two, three, go, one, two, how does no. that work now? Stand up, you had commands. Stand up, hook up, check your static line, Okay. check your equipment, sound off with equipment check, and then stand in the door. You had one guy standing one door on one side of the plane, one guy on the other side of the plane. The red light would be on, and you could hear the green light when it popped on. It would actually it make would noise. It would go pop. Okay. They, it would go then. Both sides were going out. You didn't have time, chance to actually uh, react after that. That was it, because once you started moving, the guy behind you would be pushing you out. He was actually pushing you. Because go, go. he doesn't want to miss the drop zone. Okay. So uh, a lot of times I was a pusher. Because they liked the way I pushed. Because I'd push them. <laughs> you I just may be the them. last guy at the, at the end of each line, and I'd have to push that other guy out mm. in front, keep pushing the guy in front of me, and he's pushing the guy in front of him until everyone left. But you couldn't go too fast because sometimes they would call it piggybacking. You get right on top of the other guy. Once you went on too close to a guy, when that, when the when the bag came out of out of the, the shoe came out of the bag, the bag was left behind. And I've seen a guy slapped in the face with mm. that bag and it's cut him up for something terrible. So you had to sort of uh, regulate your time. Space yourself out. Space yourself out. Now how, okay, so the, uh, I, I'm getting a feel for actually getting out of the plane. How about the free falling? I mean, what's going through your mind? Open shoot or, or what? Well, at 19 or 20 years old, you didn't think about You didn't that. care. You didn't care. No. You're because invincible. We thought we were going to live forever. Sure, sure. So, uh, but 
it was a very strange situation because uh, when you were in the barracks talking about that, everyone would be joking. Okay. Once you got to the airport Stop. and put on your chute, it was quiet as a mouse because I guess it would come on, like even me, up. you would think about, I'm hoping this chute opens and there's no problem. Now, it was already packed for you when you picked it, it up? Well, we had it. rigors. Okay, so they well, had, okay. had a special battalion that did nothing but pack chutes. Okay. And on every chute, there was a pocket on every chute with a little booklet inside with the name of the person who packed your oh, chute. Okay. And uh, he had his name, his rank, and so forth and so on, what date he packed it. And the joke was always be, if your chute doesn't open, <laughs> we can look in this book, we can tell who Find packed who did it, it, and we can go to him and tell him that he messed up and he give you another suit. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's a good idea. Only the military could come up with that idea. Yeah, yeah that was always a joke. Yeah. So free falling because you're young and you're invincible, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. What, well, do you, have, what do you see? Do you act, I mean, do you, I mean, when you watch this on movies, and the ground is coming together. Is that? Is oh, that, yes. Yes. Well, okay. actually, you're not supposed to look down. Oh, you don't look down? You just look off into the horizon. Okay. Because once you start looking down, then you start trying to hit, you start trying to determine when you're going to hit, and you tense up. Okay. So the idea is to look off to the horizon, and you can tell the, about when you're about ready to hit the ground. You kind of, the horizon kind of changes. You see it trees, changes like okay. that. But don't ever look straight down because the hesitation is just, was just too much. All right, did they? No. Now, how about, James, okay, Jumping out of the plane, someone's pushing you, you've got cords, it's, it's yeah. pretty well regulated through the air, look straight out. And how about the landing? And some of the landings, it looks soft, some of them look like they're hard as rock. Well, at, I did some jumps at Fort Bragg, and most of their, most of their drop zones were sand. Landed so it was sand. a nice, nice landing. We so used to love soft. to drop at Bragg. When we have exercises sometimes, we go to Fort Bragg. But at Fort Campbell, we didn't have that. And most of the drop zones were hard. So you just hitting the ground. And you just hit. And some, sometimes, uh, well, we had a lot of guys who walk around the battalion with uh, broken legs. Mm. That was the first time I ever saw people with the leg with the uh, with look like a boot on it. That's the first time I ever saw it. Had a lot of guys with that. Do you now again? I'm doing Hollywood specials. Yeah. When you land, is it a crouch position or is it a? How no. do you land? Well, you just land, balls to the feet. And roll over. I right, said, so balls of your feet and roll balls over. Balls of the feet, calf of the leg, thigh, buttocks, push-up muscle. Okay. That's how you land, and you roll, you roll over. And plus, when, once you roll over, you grab your chute like Shoot such, lines. because you have to try to pull yourself up, because uh, the wind would get in. I've the seen chute. men dragged. Yes. We had and a, women. We had about three guys who got killed that way. Mm. Dragged by the chute. Because the wind was blowing hard and they couldn't get up and they drug them to death. Hmm. Yeah. Now, James, how many did you ever do a night jump? Night jumps were very terrifying. Now, tell me about it. I mean, all you, you see is light. Because right? you can't, no, you don't oh, see anything. You, any, see you no. don't see anything. Oh, you don't see it's anything. It's just dark. It's, you would hope that uh, there was a full moon. And a lot of times there weren't. And you could see. You could see. Well, I've jumped in the snow, I've jumped in the rain. Uh, at night and so forth, but the night jumps were the most terrifying jump because you couldn't see anything. At and so all. if you're looking out, yeah. all you're seeing is nighttime. Yeah. And you, like you said, you don't see the lights below yet. Yeah, well, and then... How do you know when the... I mean, is it boom, you hit the ground? Or do you sense the ground is coming? Well, you, after a while, you sort of get a sense you of a sense when of you're going to hit the ground. Okay. But as you're looking out, you had to be very careful because sometimes there was water close by. And the idea was before you hit the water, you would disconnect yourself from the chute. Oh, so you wouldn't be dragged. There was a, there was a button in front of your chute here, in, but in the middle, that you would pat, and your chute would release itself. Okay. But a lot of guys did that in the water because concrete, I mean, a blacktop looks like water at night. Mm. So they released themselves right in the They huh? released themselves, and it wasn't water. Mm. And that was messy. That's not good. That That's was not messy, good. yeah. How many night jumps did you do? I had about 10 night jumps. Oh, you're quite. How many yeah. total jumps did you do? I had 35 total jumps. Hmm. Yeah. Now, James, when you're in an airborne unit, do you 
Do you have scheduled every month so many jumps? Well, you have to qualify. You have to every once every two months. You have to uh, make a jump. You make a jump. Whether you wanted to or not. Okay. To stay qualified. And now, of course, at that time, I don't know what they pay now. But it, when I was there, they were paying fifty-five dollars. That's extra. when I was in the service in the sixties. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> but that was a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, I got an extra fifty-five dollars. Fifty-five dollars extra just. What was your first now. paycheck in the Army, Private E1? Do you remember? My first check, well, I don't know, about seventeen dollars and change. Seventeen dollars a month. It was month. something like that. Oh, that's because, a, that's a good Lord to call yeah. you and say you made it, all right. Red, well, I, when I was in, uh, don't worry about that. What uh, when I was in it was fifty-five dollars yeah. jump pay, and I didn't go to jump school. Overseas pay was a certain a certain amount when I went to Vietnam. Yeah. And then basic training, nineteen sixty-six, private E one was yeah. ninety-eight dollars a month. Yeah. No, I got less than that. Yeah, you got less than that. I'm, I'm playing 17, but I think it was more than 17. I don't know why I got 17. Because when I first went in, I got the, the flying 20. $20 a month. We got, you know, they just gave everyone $20, period. Oh, okay. Now, that $20 for your haircut. Oh, shoe polish and, and all, stuff. all that sort of Foot all those, stuff. And after you, after you got all those things, that $20 was gone. They called it the flying 20. <laughs> and in those flew. days, $20 was a lot of money, right? That $20 was a lot of money. Yes, it was. Now, James, yeah. with a, minute, we, a couple of minutes we have left, let me ask you, uh, after jump school, yeah. did you go overseas or go anywhere? Or did you no. stay at Campbell the whole time? No. We were a strike unit. Uh, we uh, stayed on alert. Uh, uh, three months, uh, we was on. We had about sixty battalions on the post, 60 and we stayed on alert uh, three months out of uh, every once every three months. So if there's a hot spot in the world or somewhere, we were, you, we were, were, you were the crew. We were prepared to go, and you could jump in. Yeah, that, that, we had to uh, had to uh, put our names and addresses on our foot lockers and uh, make out our wills and so forth and who our body was to be sent to and all that sort of thing. And we just stayed in uh, field gear for three months. Mm, we so you weren't alert. We basically. couldn't leave the company area. Oh, couldn't even leave the company no, area? we couldn't leave the company area. James, I ask all the veterans, if you had to do all over, yeah. would you go back in the service? Was it a, yes, good, it was a good had, experience? It was, it was exciting. Good. Yeah, I thought at the time I was doing something uh, because I was a patriot, and I, I believe what the country was doing. And you and you enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. And you've got good stories to tell yes, TV. Yes, I was, I was, I was gun ho and all that sort of thing. Well, good, James. Yeah. Our time's about up. First yeah. of all, thank you for your service. No problem. And thank you uh, for those of you who don't know out there. James and about a dozen or half a dozen of us meet every Monday at the Centerville Dunkin' Donuts, where we have a veterans group telling right. stories like you were doing today. Right. We have a group, we have a book club, yeah. we've got a boat trip coming, we have a golf outing coming. Uh, we have all types of activities going on. So if you're a veteran, one of the 3,000, almost 3,500 veterans in Queen Anne's County, come join us for one of these events. We'd love to have you. Well, Jim, or James, thank you again for your time. Yeah. Thank you for surviving airborne. You have more guts than I do. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I have a hard time climbing stairs. I wouldn't do it now, myself. I know. <laughs> you see. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for a great show on veterans. We'll see you next time. And we're going to have County Commissioner Jim Moran, who was a member of the Marines. My name's Fred McNeil again. Thank Mr. Watson. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. And all the veterans out there, thank you for your service.